Hello children, once again welcome to our physics class. Hope you all are fine over there. Children, we were discussing about nuclei. Today also we will continue with the same chapter, nuclei. Today, first let's discuss about nuclear force. What is nuclear force? The force with which the nucleons are bound together is known as nuclear force. You know, inside the nucleus there are protons and neutrons. So, there will be strong coulombic repulsion between the protons present inside the nucleus. So, in spite of this coulombic repulsion, how they are bound together and how do they remain inside the nucleus. So, some force is required to overcome this strong repulsive force. Then only they will stay together. So, such strong forces are known as nuclear forces. So, nuclear forces are the strong forces of attraction which have held the nucleons together inside the nucleus. It is a strong attractive force that binds the nucleons together. When the nuclear force is compared to other forces of nature like gravitational or Coulomb's force etc. It is the strongest of all the forces. Then as protons are positively charged they repel each other and this force of repulsion is given by Coulomb's force of repulsion. So this nuclear force is stronger than the Coulomb's force so that it can overcome the force of repulsion between the protons present inside the nucleus. This is the reason neutrons and protons are held together inside the nucleus. And what are the properties of nuclear forces? Nuclear force is independent of electric charge. That means magnitude of nuclear force is same between proton and proton, between a proton and neutron or neutron and neutron. So it is independent of the charge present on an object. Respective of the electric charge, the magnitude of nuclear force remains the same. Now, nuclear force cannot be given mathematically. Okay, that is the second property of nuclear force. And also, we had already discussed one property, that is, it is the strongest force in nature. And also, this nuclear force can work up to a distance of only 2 or 3 Fermi meter. That means it is a short range force. The effect of force is experienced only up to a distance of 2 or 3 Fermi meter. And you know Fermi meter is a very small distance. It is in the range of 10 raised to minus 15 meter. So nuclear force is a short range force. At the same time it is a strong force. It is a short range force. And the next property of nuclear force is that nuclear force show saturation effect. That is, nucleon can interact only with a neighboring nucleon because it is a short range force. So, it has its effect only with the neighboring nucleons. And also, they are non central forces. Nuclear force is a non central force. Central force means what? See, just think about gravitational force and Coulomb force. The gravitational force acts along the line joining the centers of two objects. Similarly, Coulomb force acts along the line joining the centers of two charges. So, they act along a line that joins the centers of two entities, isn't it? So, they are known as central forces, but here uh, the nuclear force is not a central force. They do not act along the line joining the centers of two nucleons. So, they are non-central forces. So, all these are some of the properties of nuclear force. The variation of nuclear force with the distance is not known exactly. So, you can see a graph on the screen. This graph shows the variation of potential energy with the distance. Potential energy of two nucleons with the distance between them. Okay. So, here you can see potential energy is minimum at a distance of R0 equal to 0 0.8 Fermi meter. So, can you see this distance? This point. At this point, potential energy is 0. That is minimum. 
and the distance corresponding to this point is known as r0 okay so the potential energy is minimum at a distance of r0 equal to 0.8 meter 0.8 fermi meter actually not meter it is fermi meter because r is expressed in fermi meter along this x axis so what is r0 r0 is the distance at which the potential energy is minimum or zero and uh, this potential energy is becoming zero at r0 equal to 0.8 fermi meter so this point is 0.8 fermi meter okay now what happens for distance greater than r0 so all this correspond to distance greater than r0 so for distance greater than r0 that means for distance greater than 0.8 fermi meter force is attractive why you can see the energy is negative for distance greater than r0 the graph is in the negative axis that means the potential energy is negative whenever energy is negative force responsible for that will be an attractive force okay so for distance greater than 0.8 fermi meter or for distances greater than r0 potential energy is negative so force is attractive it decreases with distance and negligibly small at a distance of 4 meter so here at a distance of 4 meter this graph is negligibly small it is close to zero okay so it decreases with the distance as the distance increases it decreases and finally it becomes negligible at a distance of 4 me fermi meter so this is the case for r greater than r0 then what is the case for r greater than uh, sorry r less than r0 that means in this region so this is r0 r at the distances less than r0 means around this region and here you can see the potential energy graph is along positive axis whenever the energy is positive it means the force responsible for that will be repulsive force okay so negative potential energy signifies nuclear force is attractive for distance greater than 0.8 fermi meter that means for a greater distance okay so it is written here if distance is greater than r0 nuclear force is attractive if distance is less than r0 nuclear force is repulsive because energy graph is positive for distance less than r0 now what is nuclear energy nuclear energy is the energy that holds together nuclei of atoms okay so nuclear energy is obtained from nucleus by either breaking of a heavy nucleus into relatively lighter nuclei the process is known as nuclear fission or by combining two lighter nuclei to form a heavy nucleus the process is known as nuclear fusion okay so by nuclear fission or nuclear fusion nuclear energy is obtained from the nucleus nuclear energy is becoming a possible solution for the energy crisis in the world electrical energy can be harnessed from nuclear energy so what are the two ways to harness nuclear energy one is nuclear fission and another one is nuclear fusion scientist named fermi was the one who performed first nuclear fission reaction so who performed the nuclear fission reaction first it was a scientist named fermi he considered the sample of uranium 92 235 and bombarded bombarded means collided it with a neutron 0 n1 0 n1 represents neutron it has a mass number 1 and Uh, atomic number is zero. Atomic number means it is neutral; it doesn't have any charge. That's it. Okay. So here the equation is given. This is neutron. This is uranium. When neutron is bombarded with uranium, which is our target nuclei, what happens? You will get uranium ninety two two thirty six. See, the target nuclei was uranium ninety two two thirty five. when it is bombarded with neutron you will get uranium 92 236 which is a unstable state so it can't remain 
like it for a long period of time since it is unstable very soon it will break into or it will split into two lighter nuclei and this is that lighter nuclei one is barium 56 144 and another one is krypton 36 89 along with barium and krypton three neutrons are also produced okay so when one neutron is bombarded with uranium 92 235 at first you will get an unstable uranium 92 236 very soon that unstable uranium split into two lighter nuclei barium and krypton along with that three more neutrons are produced so this is a nuclear fission reaction so one fission reaction is capable to produce three neutrons from one nuclear fission reaction three neutrons are produced and this three neutrons again are capable to produce another three set of fission reaction okay so this reaction is known as nuclear fission reaction as heavier nucleus is broken down into lighter nuclei thereby releasing large amount of energy so along with this barium krypton and three neutrons large amount of energy is also released okay so this is the nuclear fission reaction a heavy nuclear nucleus is broken down into lighter nuclei thereby releasing large amount of energy now the reaction again is represented in the form of a figure so this is neutron neutron is bombarded with uranium 92 235 so you will get one krypton one barium along with that three neutrons are produced c1 2 3 and these three neutrons again can induce another set of nuclear fission reaction so here when neutron is bombarded with uranium you get barium krypton and three neutrons so again this neutron can be bombarded with another uranium atom and can induce a nuclear fission reaction similarly this neutron can be bombarded with another uranium atom and similarly this neutron can also be bombarded with another uranium atom so all this collision results in another fission reaction and this nuclear fission reaction can occur in two ways one is called uncontrolled chain reaction in uncontrolled chain reaction as the name indicates the reaction is uncontrolled and rapid the reaction keeps increasing and becomes huge energy of the order of mega electron volt is produced this reaction is known as chain reaction as the product formed in first reaction initiates the second reaction and so on the reaction goes on like a chain one of the important application of this chain reaction uncontrolled chain reaction is that it can be applied in making atom bombs hydrogen bombs and nuclear bombs okay so number of neutrons hitting the next target by number of neutrons emitted in the previous generation is equal to or is greater than or equal to one in the case of nuclear fission and this ratio is known as multiplication factor so what is multiplication factor number of neutrons hitting next target divided by number of neutrons emitted this ratio is known as multiplication factor and this multiplication factor should be greater than or equal to 1 for a fission reaction okay and again the fission reaction is represented here see this represents an uncontrolled chain reaction here when a neutron hits with uranium uranium 92 236 is formed and from that uranium barium krypton is formed and along with barium and krypton three neutrons are formed okay so these three neutrons will go and hit with another three uranium atoms see one neutron hit with this uranium atom another neutron collides with this uranium atom and the third one is bombarded with the third uranium atom again the process repeat 
from this single uranium atom you will get three neutrons egg barium and krypton and from this uranium atom you will get three neutrons and two barium and krypton from this uranium atom you will get three neutrons along with barium and krypton see so in the first case in the first stage three neutrons are produced but in the second stage how many neutrons are produced three plus three six six plus three nine and in the next stage it will be 27 you can count see 3 plus 3 6 6 plus 3 9 again 9 plus 3 12 12 plus 3 15 15 plus 3 18 18 plus 3 21 21 plus 3 24 24 plus 3 27 see so the number of neutrons are increasing in an uncontrolled manner after each stage so if this reaction is allowed to continue it will form an uncontrolled chain reaction or uncontrolled fission reaction and this is applied in making of atom bombs okay and here how will you find out the multiplication factor multiplication factor is the number of neutrons emitted in a given generation or in a given stage divided by number of neutrons hitting the target in the previous case so here you can see if you consider this stage here how many neutrons are produced here 3 plus 3 6 plus 3 9 neutrons are produced so the number of neutrons emitted in this stage is 9 9 divided by number of neutrons hitting the target in this case how many neutrons hit this target 3 neutrons or how many neutrons emitted in the previous stage it is 3 neutrons so 9 divided by 3 it will be 3 so here multiplication factor is greater than 1 so in the case of uncontrolled fission reaction multiplication factor will be always greater than or it may be equal to 1 okay then nuclear fission can also be um, controlled then it will be a controlled chain reaction in controlled chain reaction the reaction is controlled and steady okay so this is the reaction that takes place uh, when neutron bombard with uh, uranium atom barium krypton th three neutrons along with that some energy is also released so using some methods two neutrons out of three two neutrons are removed and only one neutron is allowed to hit the next target so what happens in the next stage also one fission reaction is induced again in that fission reaction three neutrons are produced among that three neutrons only one neutron is allowed to hit the next uranium target again only one fission reaction is induced in the next stage okay so at every stage the excess neutrons are removed and only one neutron is allowed to hit the next target okay thus the chain reaction is controlled so energy released is less as compared to the energy released in the nuclear fission reaction that means uncontrolled chain reaction so one of the most important applications of controlled chain reaction is in nuclear reactor where electricity can be produced and you all know about the nuclear reactors and in the case of uncon sorry in the case of controlled chain reaction or in the case of controlled fission reaction multiplication factor k will be less than 1 so multiplication factor is denoted by k and that ratio is given here number of neutrons heat hitting next target by number of neutrons emitted that multiplication factor will be less than 1 in the case of controlled fission reaction so here this is the pictorial representation of uh, controlled chain reaction see here when uranium bombard with uh, is bombarded with neutron uranium 236 is produced and from uranium 236 krypton barium is produced along with krypton barium three neutrons are produced see one two three three neutrons and among these three neutrons two neutrons are absorbed or are removed and only one neutron is allowed to hit the next uranium atom so only one new fission reaction is initiated in the second stage and here also three neutrons are produced along with krypton and barium among these three neutrons two neutrons are absorbed see and only one neutron is allowed to hit the next uranium target again 
it will initiate only a single fission reaction in the next stage okay in this way the reaction is allowed to proceed in a controlled manner